Good morning, everybody. Hope your evening went well. I uh, went out and listened to, uh, it's a jazz festival time in Wichita. I went out and listened to a couple of really, really, really good groups last night. Um, pretty avant-garde, but uh, really interesting to hear the kids, young people, play that well. Uh, the jazz festival in Wichita is based on education. Wichita State used to have one hell of a jazz program here. Until they quit the scholarships, the uh, guys and gals that used to play here now play at North Texas State in Denton, Texas. So uh, get a chance to go to jazz events around North Texas State. And if you like jazz, of course, do it. Uh, today is a post-auction day. We have very little in the way of the news to drive today's trading. Um, markets, flash service, PMI is at 56.2, the Michigan sentiment at 82.5. Uh, the big factor uh, in the overnight news was um, the United States has been threatening Russia with more sanctions. Russia struck back overnight saying, by golly, if you do this to us, we're going to retaliate too. Now, if you remember the uh, crisis at Cyprus, where the Russian oligarchs and Russians, rich Russians, were going to pay for the uh, Cyprus banking system. Uh, those in the know that uh, Cypriots and the Russians managed to get their money out before the banking um, crisis uh, hit everybody else's bank accounts, and the uh, wealthy uh, Cypriots were the ones that ended up bailing out their banks, and the not so wealthy Cypriots and everybody else involved. So. As usual, the big money uh, has a direct line to uh, most governments uh, in one way, shape, form, or fashion, and they uh, find ways to protect themselves. So I doubt there's not really much the West can do to Russia sanction-wise. Russia can do a hell of a lot to the West, and the biggest thing they can do is cut off uh, natural gas uh, shipments to Europe, and Germany has been taking the uh, conciliatory a uh, dovish approach to the problem that Russia has created with Ukraine. Uh, so here we are. I don't think we have a lot of news that's going to drive the trading today. Uh, the biggest negative news for the stock market was Ford failed to meet their top line and their bottom line uh, forecasts. Uh, to date, about 53% of the companies have been beating their top line forecasts. And as usual, over 70% of the companies reporting the S&P 500 beat their bottom line projections. And that's pretty easy to do if you're a major corporation with one-off accounting measures that get your earnings per share up where you forecast it. And nobody complains about that. The people that own the stock, because it helps keep stock prices up, neither does our government or our government regulators, because it helps support the stock market. So we're down. To, I really think we're down to the direction of the E-mini. Uh, today is a pause day. I think the market will close above 123.26 under any circumstances. It's settlement day. And um, that way the uh, people that bought paper this week from the Fed and the Treasury uh, don't have to send in any more money except the amount of money, the face amount of what they did spend. So we've got resistance starts 7, 9, 10 and a half, 12, 14 and a half. We've got an attractor up here at 12. So our first little band of resistance is really going to be 8 to 12. And then our second band of resistance is going to be 16 to 20. A very, very aggressive sell is 7 to 11. It's not the preferred trade. I would like to get long today to see if we could take out 12. Uh, but that may not may not be able to do that. Maybe uh, faced with being a seller first. The second sell is 15 to 19. On the buy side, we're going to try to buy threes to 31s. Uh, point of inflection, we've got London at 24 and a half, then 24 one and a half, and then we have the last rotate down last night at 31. So. We're going to make 3 to 31 by 1, and then 25, 29 for buy 2, and that'll get us 
bracket, the price that I think the market will close at or above. Taking a quick look at the 30-year, the uh, knob spread has uh, widened. Yesterday afternoon, I put an article out about the um, Treasury uh, yield curve. It's flattening. Uh, in normal prosperous times, the low interest rate is at the front end. The high interest rate's at the long end. When the yield curve flattens, it shows uncertainty. People don't know if the market's going to move into uh, a recession or uh, if growth, a uh, growth situation. So the yield curve is flattening, showing a lot of uncertainty. Uh, the guys that are fundamental players don't play gimmicks. Bet money for long periods of time are the bond players. Um, right now they're saying that the economies around the globe, uh, economic growth is not certain. Uh, in fact, economic contraction could be in the cards. Uh, we've got this round number at 135. Uh, we've got an attractor up here at 08. Um, so resistance is at 35. First sells 31 to 3103. It's not the preferred trade. Then 7 to 11 will be S2. Like the long side first to see if we can't take out resistance. Uh, London's last rotate down was 23. So we'll make 25, 21, buy one. And 17 to 13 for buy two. Okay, gold held the gains yesterday. Uh, gold got smacked pretty hard, then came back. Um, got resistance at one at not 113, at 1300. So many numbers to keep up with. And uh, then we've got pretty good support down in the 90 area. Uh, Peter Schiff had an article out based on G20 monetary policies, actions, and the prolific spending by their all G20 governments. Uh, he expects gold to go to 5000 before it's all said and done. Uh, that sure didn't hurt the price of gold overnight. So right here we are. Uh, the rotate up was 3, so we'll make 2 to 5, sell 1. And then sell 2. We got that pretty clean break at 750. We'll make it 7 to 10 for sell 2. On the buy side, um, we're at 99. Uh, last rotate down stopped at... Uh, like 94, so this will make 96, 93 by one, and then 88 to 90. Let them get stops below the overnight session low by two. Taking a quick look at the euro, the euro strengthened overnight. Um, again, part of that is the comments out of Russia. And uh, I don't think that, by, I know Germany's already said, hey, hey, <laughs> let's keep talking. Things aren't as bad as they seem. Uh, we'll be able to work out a deal. Russia will get you the money for the uh, Ukrainian gas. Uh, the IMF has approved a $17 billion loan, which will catch the Ukraine up with their Russian, delinquent Russian bills. The United States has given them a billion dollar loan guarantee and fifty million dollars in cash and medical supplies for their armies, <laughs> cots and beds. Not bullets, of course. <clears throat> so We left yesterday's market with a sell fifty to sixty and 30 to 40. Uh, we blew right through it. 50 basically held. So got to sell. Once again, we'll make it 40 to 50. We'll up it a little bit. We'll make it uh, 60 to 75. 
on the buy side. Uh, we've got all this volume down here at 13, 15, so we'll make uh, 5 to 15 buy one. And then 85 to 95 by 2. Don't think we'll see a lot of action in the euro today, but could. I think if we see action, it'll be uh, from the selling. I don't think you'll see it from the uh, on the buy side. Looking at crude, crude uh, has discounted Putin's statements and the Ukrainian Prime Minister's statements that uh, Russia is trying to start World War III. That would be the pits. World War III starts between the Ukraine and Russia and spreads around the globe. I don't, uh, there's no way that can happen. but. Uh, Ukraine can sure as hell get their clock cleaned on this deal. But it's always easy to go in and invade a country, knock the daylights out of the uh, existing standing forces, the formal defense structure. It's really, really hard to subjugate a country that doesn't want to be subjugated. And you, you see it happen over and over again. When Germany invaded Russia, Germany was welcomed with open arms. Uh, because the uh, Russian communists were not um, uh, easy to live with. They, made, they killed a lot of people. When Germany started liquidating uh, various Russian groups, uh, the most prominent being the Jews, but they weren't the only ones, uh, then all of a sudden the Russians began resisting the Germans, and uh, the Germans lost the protection for their uh, supply chain. So uh, it's very, very difficult to take over and subjugate a country that doesn't want to be taken over and subjugated. Okay, we're going to make buy one 101 to 101.25, I don't think, with the weekend coming and the rest of it and the world response to Russia's uh, at least rattling the uh, cage that the West is trying to paint them into. Uh, we've got the last rotate up in London at 65, so maybe stops above that, 75 to 102. We'll bring it in a little bit. And then 225 to 250. And now to everybody's favorite contract. The month of April, statistically, uh, is supposed to show um, a gain of 2.5% for stock indexes. It is the friendliest month uh, of the calendar year for the stock market. And a lot of people will play it that way. So the E-mini is under pressure. Uh, the selling in the E-mini overnight is attributed to Russia's threat to retaliate against the West. Uh, if Russia were to cut off the gas to Western Europe, that would have significant impact. And Russia can do that for a couple, three, four, five days. But it also would really, really hurt Russia. I mean, it would guarantee that uh, the liquid natural gas <coughs> complexes and hubs to bring in liquefied natural gas from the rest of the world, uh, they would continue to build those and at a faster pace. So. We've got our breakout here at 65, 67. That could be pretty good support. We've got our attractor right here. Um, the other rotate down, uh, we have 61. Uh, the last day session rotation down stopped at uh, 59, so 59 to 61 is another spot. Then our 55, 57 would be the third spot. Uh, the market is pointed lower. Uh, we have sellers at 73. We're at 67. So um, 70, 72 will be sell one. 
and then uh, 74, 76 will be cell 2. Uh, buy 1, I'm going to open it up a little bit. We're going to make 60, 62, buy 1. And buy 2 will be 55, 57. I think we can go a little bit lower. I, I don't think we can break it um, based on what's been going on with uh, reported earnings and the rest of it. I think the best shot we have, though, for a trade, if you're a longer-term player looking for a swing trade, is uh, uh, getting short in this 75 area with a play of uh, at least 40. So you could buy puts, 40 puts, or you could buy um, uh, 25 puts, something like that would be a re pretty reasonable play. With the, it won't cost you a lot of money if you're wrong, and the idea is that we're in a trading range. We don't have the news yet to break it out. So that's all I have for the E-mini. Uh, it'll take me at least 15 minutes to get everything up and around and posted. Um, the news comes in late today at uh, 9.45 and 9.55 Eastern, so uh, the direction of the E-mini is going to drive the trading early in the session and then the E-mini's reaction to the early news. Back with you as fast as I can. Thank you.